I haven't been this excited about reviewing a tool since the release of the Makita 40 volt stuff last year. Disclaimer, if you're in the US, that statement might sound a little bung. Welcome my fellow tool tragics, another Makita 18 volt tool up for review this week and it is one we've been waiting for a long time. Not necessarily this one, but finally a Makita cordless 18 volt belt sander. Ideally I would have liked the first belt sander to come out to have been a 3 inch wide one rather than 9 millimeters, which is like just a whisker under 3 eighths whatever that is in crazy talk. I've got to get it out of the box and have a look at it and then I'll tell you some of the features and numbers and all that stuff. The wife shouldn't have left her credit card on the bench again. Well I spent the last two minutes trying to work out where the handle goes. There's nowhere for it to screw in. And I was thinking how have I been duped by a handle? Then I of course looked in the box and saw this. So the handle screws into this bit which then slides over the edge like that. Which seems a little odd but I guess it means you can have it in any position on that area there to get it exactly the way you want it. So maybe it's a good thing. There looks to be a lot of features on this thing. A lot of knobs, a lot of adjustments, little dials, all sorts of stuff going on. This could be a fun one. Before we go any further I guess I better tell you what the model numbers and stuff are. In the US, this is the XSB01. In the rest of the world, the DPS180. I think those are the only two numbers for this particular tool. And for a change, we got the one with the proper lettering, the BS for belt sander. And the US one is the opposite. Usually it's the other way around. Anyway, that's just tool nerd stuff. One other quick thing I'll tell you before we start, if you're thinking this is rather thin, there are three different sizes you can get. You can replace this arm. It comes in this part of the world with a 9mm. Somewhere else it might be different. I think they all come with 9mm, but I'm not 100% sure. So 9mm, you can also get a 6mm, very fine, so round quarter of an inch. And you can get a 13mm or half inch. So we have a variable speed dial down here. Nice, quite a stiff dial, which is good. I hate loose ones that vibrate along, often on cheap tools. You've got to either tape them down or just keep adjusting it all the time because it keeps getting slower on you. And here's something I haven't seen on a Makita cordless tool before. An adjustable light. Look at that. You can flick it down. Basically has three locking positions. How cool is that? Very nice. Another great feature. It appears to have a trigger lock. So you can lock it on which is great if you're getting into weird angles and you want to hold it like this or something when you want to get in somewhere and being a sander you know it's not a hugely dangerous thing so there's no reason why you can't lock that on glad that's there that's very very helpful so you can hold it like that not having to constantly have apply pressure with your finger which if you're doing something for a long period of time cleaning up welds or something then you know your finger get, starts to ache if you're just constantly pushing in one place whereas if you can hold the whole tool down there much nicer it also has a trigger lock to stop it from starting so if you're throwing it around the back of your van you can lock it and it won't get knocked on by accident so very nice both of those are good features of course there's one other little nice thing about this I'll tell you right at the end on the bottom here we have a bung which is for dust extraction you know I don't know how useful that will actually be it's very small as well I guess it's 22 mil, but it looks looks a little bit smaller. It moves. I'm guessing you're not going to be running it in this position. It'd be rather tricky. But it does go right round, so almost 180 degrees. Has a positive stop there at 90 degrees, so it's kind of like a drill or a pistol style trigger. And then you can release this switch here and take it round further if you wish if you were storing it you might want to lock it up like that in your vehicle so this doesn't get damaged with it sticking out like that the belts are 533 millimeters long how long is that in inches how long is that in inches somebody google it quick did you do it did you google it is it 21 inches pretty sure it's 21 inches so this is like 3 8 by 21 inches and it has a rather simple locking handle, very similar, looks like the one that's on my metal cutting circular saw, I think. It's an old sort of style Makita locking switch, it is metal. On the top here, 
We have a belt release to take the pressure off when you want to change your belts. This here is presumably the belt adjustment. And if you have a look just here, you can see that going in and out. So we'll have a play with that, of course, once we stick a belt on. And I think this is the only bit that changes when you want to change it to a 6mm or a 13mm. Let's just check that theory. We remove this screw. I'm pretty certain this will slide out. So that's it. That's all it is. This adjustment here be for it sliding backwards and forwards when you take off and clamp on your belt. So that's pretty simple. If you want to change heads, not a big deal. One screw and you're done. Nothing like a simple screw to get the job done. I'm glad it came with the 9mm rather than the 6 and the 13 because I figured good middle ground there and 9mm was probably wide enough. Although the more I look at these belts, the more I think a 13mm one would be better for my needs. But we'll start with this of course and we'll see how we go. Maybe one day we'll get all three. In the background you may be able to hear, just making sure that I've got a freshly charged 5 amp hour battery so everybody's happy and we will go put this through its paces and we'll just test out some of the features and see how quick, oh well, first I'll tell you how quick it is, it is a variable speed as of course you know, I already showed you that, so it starts off at 600 and goes up to 1700, oh and the other thing I was going to tell you, the other special little thing about it, made in Japan. Thought you might like that little nugget. Maybe that's why it costs so much. Here's the light, the adjustable angles. Goes through about, what, nearly 90 degrees. Right, and we'll slowly just ramp it up, eh? Just see how she sounds, how she feels. So at 1700 RPM, she's whacking along pretty quick. Nice brake on it. Yeah, that's nice. When using a sander like this, you just need to take note of where the points are where you should be sanding. If you see here, these two points here, that's where you want to sand. If you're trying to do it there, you could wear out parts you don't want, snap your belt, that sort of thing. Depends on what you're sanding and how you want to do it and stuff. But ideally, these are the two points where you'd want to sand. Right, I have a 60 grip belt on here at the moment. I'm going to go put this through its paces. Well, let's do a test actually. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do a test where I use all the different belts I've got and we'll just see how quickly they cut through a piece of timber essentially. See how fast it goes down, say, one inch. Just, just for fun. There's another battery ready to go. Let's do it. For this test, I am essentially going to saw through this piece of wood. It is 42 millimeters by 12 millimeters. It is pine. I'm not using the side handle, just single hand pressure. It's a good start, wasn't it? That's actually the second one. Now you'll see I um, I did it there, which is what I told you not to do. I told you to do it up there. For this sort of oddball test, it seems to be working better down here. Less chance of breaking. 240. Gets clogged up with dust in there pretty damn quick, building up quite a lot. Now I was going through 60 grip belts there flat out. The average lifespan was about four, four to six seconds I would have said. I didn't seem to break any of the other grits so maybe I got a dud batch of 60 grip ones or maybe you know I was pushing my luck a little bit. 
trying to cut through things so fast, putting a bit too much pressure on on the wrong part of the tool. But that was kind of the whole point of the thing, just to see what it was capable of. Still quicker by a long shot to cut through something with this than it is a multi-tool. Multi-tool fans unleash below. Now I've got a bit of a complaint about the dust port which says 22 mil in the manual. I just looked it up but I mean this is a 22 mil internal diameter 22 mil. It is nowhere near going to fit on there. It needs another adapter inside there again. So that's a bit of a pain. How many different size bloody cuff friggin extractor things do you need to make all these Makita tools? Suck up the dust! Now some of you will be saying, hey tools, what would I actually use this for in real life? Well, I reckon the 6mm one would be the one to get if you wanted to use this for cleaning up welds. Be much better for getting into tight spaces. These are great if you do a lot of door installations um, and you're putting locks in. Because when you, you drill your hole for the lock and you sort of want to square it up, bang, get this in there, doof, 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 doof. In fact, I know a door that could use this right now. Let's go have a crack at that. Well, hopefully that'll shut up a bit better now. That's Remu I've just been sanding. If you want to quickly route something but you can't be bothered changing the bit in your router, then, or you've got a really tight corner to get into that the router can't get into, then this is super handy for that sort of thing. You can use it to clean up your rough old holes. Today I am going to attempt to do a bit of a plunge cut with this thing. I've stuck an 80 grit on it because I've run out of 60s, they seem to snap too damn fast. Still not sure if it's me or the belts. I have been abusing this and putting it through its paces and probably overdoing things a little bit. I know some of you will yell at me that I don't know what I'm doing with this thing in the description. I mean description, damn it. Comments. Oh, and have you seen the, um, the new little um, Haikoki router? Anyway, anyway, back to this. So I'm going to see if I can plunge cut a sort of rectangular hole. If this sort of works, it'd be quite good with a 13 mil or half inch. You could basically do a half inch square hole, which would be quite cool. If you're into that sort of thing. Not the cleanest, but it did it. As you can see, this hole here, straight through. This one, I tried to not go straight through and just make a bit of a channel. So it's just a bit of a recess there. It's not very tidy. Once I get better at using the tool, it might be a bit better. But if you wanted to do a little notch like that, it's not an easy thing to do without a router. And if you are short on a router, quite handy. Now a lot of people, and in some parts of the world, this would be called a power file. But on the box, in this country, it's called a belt sander. It is used as a power file for a lot of things. But it is also, of course, a belt sander. So if you want to just compare things, this is a 9mm belt sander, then you can have a 75mm belt sander, a 100mm belt sander, 13mm, that sort of thing, makes it a lot easier to compare because you know they're all basically the same function, they're belt sanders, but 
this is a PAL file as well. Take your pick, I don't care. As well as woodworking, you can of course use these tools in metalworking applications for things such as taking the burrs out of the inside of pipes, gets into those places you can't get into with a grinder or as I'm about to do in this next shot try and clean up a old well that's a bit shite looks like that went out of focus did it? well as you can see I took off the high points on there I get the end in there. Let's just smooth that right off now. Much nicer. Right, let's wrap this tool review up. Why does it look, oh, hang on, sort out my lighting. That's better. Now, let's just have a quick talk about this thing. Just give you a few little tips if you're not used to this sort of tool. I mean, there'll be guys that are watching this that are, you know, use these all the time and know about it better than me. But when you're putting a belt on, just make sure, you've got this sort of black area here when it's not covered in shit that is kind of like a guard to stop the belts pinging off and behind that you've got another little ridge you need to make sure you get your belt over that other ridge else if you put it sort of just on the edge when you start her up you'll start sanding away the metal and there'll be sparks going everywhere maybe I did it so get your belt in fairly deep sort of try and get it roughly in the middle of the roller there before you stretch it down hook it over the end and then lock it up then you need to adjust it only takes a few seconds just like every other belt sander give it a quick adjustment I find it adjusts way quicker and easier than any other belt sander I've ever used some of the, some belt sanders just slowly go back and forth but this one being a small one you can adjust it in just a few seconds if you have a battery on the tool to demonstrate it so as soon as you put it on just have a look down the line Try and make it so that you can only see the belt, you don't see any of the metal of the tool. See, it only takes a few seconds. That's particularly important if you are trying to cut straight through a piece of wood, for instance. If you don't have it right in the middle, it tends to wander off to one side or the other. But I love the power of it, it's good, it's not too much. At times, I sort of wanted maybe a little bit more, but I, you know, it's a sander, I was pushing it a bit. Trying to do things that you wouldn't normally do with a sander. The angles and adjustments pretty good. I tend to use it on about a 45 degree angle, I sort of about there most of the time. I found with the handle like that, that's a sort of natural, nice angle. I also tended to use it mostly on number three setting when I've been using it. I used it probably for five in a lot of the video um, because I was trying, well, when you're making these videos you try and do it quick so that it's not too long and boring for you guys. So most of the time in the shots it'll be on five, you will have seen me doing it slower on something, no doubt. Of course you've got this locking feature, you can mount this if you wished. I'm not sure exactly how you would mount it, um, probably not something I'm going to do. And it's nice and light. Let's just see how light. With a 5 amp hour battery, look at that, 1850 grams, less than 2 kgs, so not much heavier than an impact driver. So pretty damn good, especially for the size of it. It's got good weight ratio and size and everything, it just feels nice, you know. Feels like a good Makita tool should. And, you know, just feels like you're holding a drill or an impact driver. It is also pretty darn quiet. 
that's as noisy as it gets, that's the highest speed. And I haven't been using air protection with it, it doesn't need it as far as I'm concerned. If you're using it on steel or something then you might want to use earmuffs. I have gone through a shitload of belts and I have gone and purchased a shitload more belts. I'm not sure if they're the Makita belts that are the problem or not. I've noticed these ones that came with it, which I haven't actually used. Uh, maybe these ones are made in Japan. They have a straight join and they have a pink tape connecting them, which is different to the other Makita ones. And these ones say that you can run them in either direction. Whereas these ones are made in Italia and they are cut on the angle. So they're, they're done on the angle and the tape is clear and when this thing gets hot I found they tend to give way at that point. So they heat up and the tape gives way, melts the glue I guess, which is a bit annoying. Um, I might try and find a better source than the Makita ones. I've had sort of hit and miss with Makita abrasives. For instance, this is, as you can see, a orbital sanding disc and no fluff. I've had this happen to me several times with the Makita ones. These are also made in Italy and this is of course how they should stick. Nice and stuck. These ones not happening. Brand new, no good. I've had it a few times I've had just the occasional one, a couple in a packet that are no good, and one time an entire packet. This packet, 120 grit ones, absolutely useless. No fluffy stuff to stick to your Velcro hooks. So maybe I'll have to find some better belts. I also, in the video when you saw me doing metal work, I used these wood belts. So that's not ideal for doing stuff with metal, obviously. But I wasn't going to go out and try and source some other ones at the moment. It's great for in situ work where something's already in the way and you can't get in there very easily. Great for getting into the small gaps of that sort of thing. If you're doing a repair job and you just need to tidy up something awkward. Fantastic for that sort of thing. It's fixed my front door, which has been not, the deadlock hasn't been working on it for about two months now. Every summer, when the ground water levels change and the house moves just slightly, the deadlock doesn't shut. So now with this slight little sand I did with this, it works perfectly, beautifully smooth. So overall, I think this is a tool I will hopefully be using for many years to come. I will put a link down in the description if I can find them. It's a pretty new damn tool. But depending on when you watch this, there will hopefully be links down below to the tool and to the arms if I can find them, the, um, the 6mm and the 13mm. If you do buy one of these, can you please let me know down in the comments whether it is made in Japan or not. be interested to see if they're all made in Japan or whether some markets are getting ones that are made in China or elsewhere in the world. They do make Makita tools in other places other than China and Japan. I have a few from the UK. And there's probably a few other places, different markets, get ones from different areas of the world. And next week, of course, we have another review, and it is, surprise, surprise, another Makita. So, thanks for watching, guys. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And to my subscribers, my loyal subscribers, thank you very much. People on videos are always saying, please subscribe, but what about all the people that have already subscribed and watch every week? You guys are the real heroes. You're the real heroes. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the regular comments I get from you guys. I appreciate it. I love reading them. It's, it's a good laugh sometimes. Winds me up other times. But anyway, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another one soon. I better go film a two-screw review for the other channel. Oh, and I'm going to have to clean this up for the damn photo, aren't I? Got to make a thumbnail of this thing. I'm going to have to blow all this shit off it. Or shall I leave it dusty? What do you reckon? No point in asking you because you've already seen it by the time you've heard this bit. Okay. I'll come up with something.